I'd like to begin this morning by sharing a scripture that is not uh, not in our lectionary, not part of our sermon message this morning, but but a part of this old rugged cross that bears witness to our reflection, bears witness to our willingness to open our hearts, our desire to come closer to our Lord and Savior, to clear a path for us that we may draw near to Him. The prophet Isaiah says in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry. And I said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass and all its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows on it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. From the 40th chapter of the prophet of Isaiah. What a blessing that God has given us this time to reflect and to move forward in in our journey with Him in our forming of our relationship with Him. What a blessing that that we can be reminded to spend some extra time each and every day with our God. What a blessing that we have the opportunity to choose. You see, that's really what today's scripture is all about. The opportunity to choose. Jesus was given the same opportunity. He was given the opportunity to choose whom he would follow. He was blameless. He was mistake free and none of us can say that. And yet God still gave him the opportunity to choose. And the great tempter came and and tempted him more sorely than we will ever be tempted. Won't you bow with me as we pray? Holy and loving God, we praise and thank you for this day and this time, this season that leads to the great celebration of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Remind us day by day to fast from the world and to come near to you. Remind us day by day of your love for us. Encourage us, Lord, be with us. Make your Holy Spirit to minister to us so that as the great tempter comes to us with the things of this world, that we may rejoice in the knowledge that you have already overcome the world and you have made a place for us in your kingdom. Help us day by day to choose you, dear Lord, as we open our hearts now to your living word. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So our scripture today, again, is one that, that I know that you'll be very familiar with. It's the story of the temptation of Jesus as Jesus finished his 40 days of fasting in the wilderness, fasting in the desert in preparation to begin his ministry. <clears throat> the devil came to him. Just as he comes to all of us. I invite you to follow along. It's printed on the back of your bulletin. From the fourth chapter of Matthew. Then Jesus was led up by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and he said to him. If you are the son of God command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered. It is written, one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, 
so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus said to him, Again it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him up to a very high mountain and showed him all of the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, All of these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan. For it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. And then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited upon him. May the Lord add his blessing to this reading of his word. There was a very famous flying ace in World War I, whom you may be familiar with. His, he was called the Red Baron. Anybody heard of the Red Baron? If, you, if you're not familiar with him, you're probably familiar with him from the Peanuts cartoons because Snoopy was always doing battle with the Red Baron. His, his name, the real man, who he was a real man, his name was Manfred Freiherr von Richtenhofen. And he was the best, the best flying ace in World War I. He was known for his distinctive... Uh, red biplane that was it was called a, a red Falker was the the name of the aircraft and and he was feared by every Allied airman in in the war. One day he was they were there was a battle line of a front and on the front and and he was in a dogfight and he began to chase a Canadian airman. The Canadian airman trying desperately to get away from the Red Baron swooped and dove and they were up very high in the air and and he began to descend and the Red Baron chased after him and they crossed over the lines into the Allied territory and the Red Baron couldn't resist following them and it followed him into the into the allied territory and the the Canadian airmen began to dip farther and farther until he was barely skimming along the ground going around trees and through fields and the Red Baron wouldn't give up he couldn't stop chasing he was right there this Canadian was right there and he was going to get him and he chased after him and he chased after him to the point where he forgot to watch behind him and another Canadian airman came up behind him And he killed the Red Baron. That man's name was Roy Brown. He was a Canadian airman. And he was no different than the average average Canadian airman. He wasn't anything special. But he he eliminated the greatest threat, the greatest airman ace in World War I, the Red Baron. And an author later wrote a book about about the Baron. And he said in that book, he said that the Red Baron flew too long, too far, and too low into enemy territory. Hear those words. He flew too long, too far, and too low into enemy territory. And he was done away with. The reason I tell you that story is because this exact same scenario can happen to each and every one of us when we fall into the temptations of the world. It's absolutely the truth. The temptations of this world are bright and shiny and they're there. They're right in front of us all the time. And the great tempter is constantly trying to attract us to them and away from the Lord. One author said, Sin can take us further than we ever wanted to go. Sin costs more than we are ever willing to pay. And sin hurts more than we ever dreamed it would. And it all starts with how we handle temptation. You see, Jesus gave us the example. Jesus, in seeking to come close to the Lord... He went out into the desert in preparation for his ministry and he fasted for 40 days. 
just water, a little bit of water. You can imagine, by the end of that 40 days, he was, well, as Scripture says, he was famished. Not only famished, but in a greatly weakened condition, I imagine, being out in the desert, not just not eating, but being out in the desert for 40 days. He was in a weakened condition. He was tired. He was famished. And now comes Satan. At the very end of this fast, Scripture says Satan came to him. Satan knew, if, I, if I'm going to get him, now's the time. Now's the time. He waited for the opportune moment, just like he waits for us. Not that we necessarily are preparing for anything great and going on a, a great fast in order to prepare for that, but just in life itself as we become tired and weathered like the old rugged cross, Satan comes to us at just the right moment and he tempts us and he seeks to draw us away from the Lord. He, wants to, he whispers in our ear and he tells us, how poor we are at what we do and, and that we're really no good anyway and that why don't we just give in to the world? Why don't we just give up with this, this quest for coming near to the Lord? Why don't we follow the ways of the world? It would be so much easier. It would be so much easier just to do what feels good, to do what makes us feel good, to distract ourselves from our real issues in our lives, to turn to to turn to drugs and alcohol and, and television and, and other people and, and all of the things that can distract us from the real issues that we have to deal with because we forget. We forget that wherever we go, there we are. We can't get away from ourselves. All of these things that are tempting us really reflect are a reflection of the issues that we have within our own hearts. Our own self-consciousness, our own, our own self-pity, our own feelings of worthlessness. They're, they're but a reflection from the things that attract us to distract us. For wherever we go, there we are. Jesus was tempted with three things by Satan. The first was food, obviously. He was famished. Satan said, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become bread. And Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone. You see, for us it could be whatever. It doesn't have to be about bread. It could be anything in our lives. And what we have to tell the tempter when he comes to us is, is, I'm not about this. This does not control me, whatever it may be for you. I live on the word of God. And when we stand firm on that, the Lord himself comes to us and he strengthens us so that we can overcome the temptation. The second thing that the devil tempted him with was the need to be valued. Each and every one of us needs to feel like we're of value, like what we're doing is worthwhile, the life we're living is worthwhile. Satan said he took him up on a high place and he showed him in an instant all of the kingdoms of the world and he said to him, I will give you all the authority and splendor for it has been given to me and I can give it to anyone I want to. So if you worship me, it will be yours. And Jesus answered, it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve Him only. It's so easy for us to fall into serving, to serving the world, to serving the temptations that come to us, to serving our needs. We feel like they are our needs, our physical needs. I need this. I need to be distracted. I need what I need and the heart wants what the heart wants and it's a lie that's what we have to remind ourselves always is that it is a lie that God desires us to turn to him 
We need Him. And He will give us everything else. And lastly, Jesus was tempted with the the need to be significant. To be important. After all, He was human. And Satan sorely tempted Him. He said, He led The devil led Jesus to Jerusalem and had him stand to the highest point on the temple. He said, if you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered him back. He said, it says, do not put the Lord your God to the test. God gave Jesus the opportunity to choose. Just as he gives us the opportunity to choose. We're not as strong probably as Jesus Christ was and is. I know I'm not. But I trust. I trust in the Lord. I trust that if I turn to Him and I believe in Him and I give my whole heart to Him and I do as He calls me to do, that He's going to take care of me. That He's going to guide me in this path of righteousness. That I will have the opportunity to do better. Yes, I fail and I fall short. Yes, I make mistakes. But if I trust in the Lord and we all trust in the Lord, He's going to help us through the temptations of this life. He's going to help us to do better. I want to end with two things. First, this little short poem. The poem says, Some go to church to laugh and to talk. Some go to take a walk. Some go there to seek a lover. Some go there the fashions to discover. Some go there to wink and nod. But a few go there to worship God. I wonder, why did I come to church this morning? Lastly, I invite you to open your hymnals again. If you would, open your hymnal to page 377. This beautiful old hymn, right next to the one we sang earlier. It is well with my soul. Would you read the third verse aloud with me the third verse let's join together my sin oh the bliss of this glorious thought my sin not in part but the whole is nailed to the cross and I bear it no more praise the Lord praise the Lord oh my soul I praise God That my sin and that our sin is nailed to the cross. And that we don't have to bear it. That God takes it. That Christ has taken it for us when he went to the cross. He bore our sins for us. But yet we have the temptations. No matter what. In this world. As we are a part of this world. As long as we are a part of this world. We will be tempted. And we are to be reminded that no matter where we go, there we are. Because no matter what, we cannot escape ourselves and our own brokenness. But through the grace and the love of Jesus Christ, our sins are borne by us no more. In His name and for His sake. Amen. Won't you bow with me as we pray? Holy and loving God, this morning we we thank you for the opportunity to come to the table and to come to the altar, to take of the bread and the cup.
to join together in the sacrament of Holy Communion. We praise you, Lord, for this magnificent blessing, the gift of Jesus Christ giving himself for us. His body broken, his blood shed, our sins washed away. Lord, strengthen us for the days ahead as we face temptation. Strengthen us that you may be glorified. We praise you in the name of Christ. Uh, amen. Amen.